Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Design Tech. And in today's episode, we are going to be setting up our ME system. A couple things I did between episodes, other than a whole lot of grindy stuff to get ready for the ME system. I got rid of that annoying hole in the floor of our big reactor building and put in an elevator right here that takes you straight to the Enderman farm. And then you can actually go down again, and this is the room where we're going to be setting up our ME system right down here. So... That's kind of what I've been doing, and then a lot of grindy crafting ME stuff. I made all of this stuff, and I made all of this stuff. We've actually got all the components that we need to set up our basic ME system. So, this is good. This is definitely a good thing. Let's grab an energy acceptor. Let's actually grab all of this stuff, and then I also need a tesseract. There we go. And... I think I'm actually going to make a chest as well. I need iron, I need gold, I need two diamonds, and some glass. There we go. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and make a diamond chest because we're going to need that uh, once we get into some other stuff, pretty much for importing things into the ME system. So let's just put this stuff away. There we go. And let's head on down to the ME room. Now, this is where our actual terminal is going to go, right here. Uh, and then we're going to need, let's see, let's just start putting stuff down. I'm thinking I've got a ME controller right here, which I don't really need right away, uh, because this is basically for making much larger ME networks than what we're going to start with, but I will need it eventually. Um, so I figured we might as well go ahead and make it. It's actually not too hard to make. It's just, uh, some sky stone, which we had from collecting meteor stuff and then the other stuff. But anyway, so we've got that going. Uh, we're going to need our energy acceptor for sure. We should also probably see where are our chunk boundaries. It looks like this is all within, whoa, huh. it looks like this is all within one chunk, which is good. Yeah, that's actually really good. Okay, so let's turn off that. And I'm thinking we'll put our energy acceptor right here. I'll put our ME drive. Actually, you know what? Let's let's move this. Let's move some stuff around. We'll put our ME controller here, I think. We'll put our ME drive here. Energy acceptor can go right here. We'll set this to this channel and go energy receive. So this should have power now. And we want it to send and receive items, send and receive fluid, and energy it won't need. Okay, so that should be good. Then we're going to grab some glass cables. And we'll just kind of run that to here and throw an ME crafting terminal on there. And we don't actually have anything in here yet as far as power goes. So let's run that. There we go. Now we've got power in all of the things. And then we'll put this in here and these in here. So we should now have the ability yeah, we've got storage space, which is good. Awesome. Okay, so the ME system is technically up and running now, although we're going to make it a lot more uh, complex than what we've got. Um, I've got these various components for making more stuff if I need it. I'm not going to mess around with those right now. I do want to make a ME storage bus for cobble, specifically. Because very soon, we're going to set up a uh, an ender quarry, and that's going to give me insane amounts of cobble, and I don't want to flood my ME system with that. So, let's grab an ME interface, one sticky piston, and one regular piston. And let's go ahead and make an ME storage bus. There we go. And then I'm just going to grab some cobble, and we'll put that down here. And we'll use a deep storage unit because this thing holds a ridiculous amount of cobble. So uh, let's put that right 
here. I Well, yeah, that's a terrible spot for it. Let's put it right here. And then we'll put an ME storage bus on it like that. And then this thing should hold cobble. And when we look in here, we should see our cobblestone in there. We can take it, we can put it back in, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, now, I believe there is a way to... Um, there is a way to basically make this the priority location for cobble, and I think that's what we just did. Maybe? Is there... Why does it say no cobble in there? Um, if I put this in here... There we go. Okay, now it's good. So, this will be where we store all of our cobble, and we're going to have a whole lot of cobble, so uh, it's very important that we do that. Okay, so that's good. Now, I also want a way to basically take stuff that goes into this Tesseract and send it into the ME system. So, we're also going to need an import bus, uh, and let's just take a look at that. That's one thing that I didn't actually make, but... Let's go ahead and make an import bus. We're going to need all this stuff. So I'm going to need an, an, an annihilation core. That's kind of hard to say. Um, there we go. And I'll need a little bit of quartz for that. No big deal. I did spend some time in the nether gathering that. And there we go. Make a couple of those. And then it was also two iron and a sticky piston. So there we go. And... There we go. All right. So, sticky piston. And there's our import bus. And that will basically take things from the chest and put them into the ME system. We also have some acceleration cards, which we're going to use to speed up that process. So, let's go... Um, import bus. Like a so. And then we will right-click on it and put in our acceleration cards... And that will basically greatly increase the speed at which stuff goes in here. So if I put nether quartz in here, it will disappear and appear in the ME system, which is exactly what we want. So that's good. Um, I need to make sure, though, that when we import stuff into the Tesseract, that it will appear in that chest. That's kind of important. So let's go, let's go over here and let's grab a couple item conduits and I'll just put one right here and then we'll grab this Tesseract and change it to there and we want this on items send and on this channel there we go then we want this to be on insert and this to be on extract always so that should start yanking stuff out of here and when we check this chest we should see stuff appearing and it should be making its way into here. Good, 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 good. That's exactly what we want. Okay, awesome. So, that's doing well. Now let's go ahead and take a little sleep, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import all of my stuff from all of these chests into the ME system. So, that's gonna take me a little while. Let me get to it, and I'll come back to you in just a sec. All right, guys, I am back, and we're making a lot of progress. We're getting there. The only things left are this guy, and then these two barrels, and the, um, the NRIO conduits are taking out, like, four items at a time, so it's gonna take a really long time to do that. I think what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and make some speed upgrades for the NRIO conduits. Uh, so, what we can do, uh, I'm gonna need to make a couple of redstone torches so let's go ahead and make a bunch of sticks that will be enough we'll make some redstone torches I need to make some 
pistons. Let's just do like 10. That should be good. And then let's... What am I missing? Oh, iron. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead. Oh, so these take electrical steel. Ugh. How much electrical steel do I have? I can't imagine it's a lot. Let's see. Elect... 23? Okay, so actually I'm doing pretty good on electrical steel. So let's just make some iron ingots. And let's go ahead and make a few of these speed upgrades. I think five will be enough. So let's go ahead and put those in here. Is this guy done? It's getting there. Let's drop them all in here and see... Oh yeah, that's way, way faster. Look at that. Look at it go. Love it. Okay, and then we can get rid of a bunch of these conduits. Let's do the cobble next and see... Yep, that is definitely going a lot faster, th a lot faster than it was. So we'll let that go down all the way, and then once it's done, I'll yank it out and put all the stuff on the smooth stone, and it should be good to go. Okay, so we've got that on its way. Um, let me get back to this, guys, and I'll come back to you in just a sec. All right, guys, I am back, and it looks like all of the stuff has been yanked out and put into the ME system. So let's go take a look at it. Uh, also, let's just harvest up this wheat real quick. This will be on a actual, like, um, I'm going to automate this, this farm very, very soon. Uh, because there's really no reason not to at this point. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So let's put all this in here. And as you can see, we've got our little ender chest linked up to our ender pouch. So I can once again uh, put stuff in here. It will go into this chest and be dumped directly into the ME system, which is what we want. We've got a deep storage unit here for cobble, which has 10k at the moment. And then we've got this ME drive, which is actually getting pretty full already. Um, but we can go through here and kind of get rid of some of this stuff, like these bows, for example, are not stackable. Um, so we don't really need those. This iron armor can come out and go out and just be thrown away. Same with this sword. Uh, there's a lot of these kind of like one type items that I just really don't need anymore. Uh, in fact, let's just grab all of this stuff out of here and that should actually open up a reasonable amount of space because the way that the me system works is it can store uh multi it can store uh a lot of stacks of a single type of item so like cobblestone for example it could store a lot of cobblestone um and it can only but it can store 64 of a uh, how do i explain this Essentially, it doesn't like non-stackable items. Non-stackable items and ME systems do not get along very well. Let's just put it that way and leave it at that. That's probably the easiest way to explain it. Okay, so we'll put that stuff in here. We'll put that here. I'm actually going to put this Tesseract into my little bag of goods that I take around with me everywhere I go because you never know when you're going to need a Tesseract. And now, I think it is time that we get into an ender quarry, because that is a really important thing for us to have. Why? Why you know harvest? There we go. That was a little weird. Uh, anyway, so, ender quarry. There's a lot of stuff that goes into an ender quarry. Uh, we're obviously going to need a tesseract. We're going to need uh, some other things as well. So, first and foremost, let's go and see about making the QED, which is... Essentially an item we're going to need to craft everything else in the Ender Quarry. So, first and foremost, we're going to need a couple Eyes of Ender. We're going to need a crafting table, which is pretty easy. Then we're going to need Burned Quartz, and we don't actually have any of that yet. And we're going to need Ender Infused Obsidian. So, Ender Infused Obsidian I can get pretty easily. The burned quartz, on the other hand, is going to be a little bit trickier. So let's go ahead and take a look at quartz. And we're going to need some of this. Now the problem is, and it's not really a problem per se, but... Oh, hey, hey. Uh-oh. Um, how? How'd you... Okay. Oh, that's the... That's not where I want to be. Close that off. I ended up... <laughs> 
<clears throat> excuse me. I ended up on the wrong side. Elevators being derpy. There we go. Uh, so the ender, the burned quartz you get by essentially burning um, quartz. Now the problem is that in here, if I burn a bunch of quartz at once, it's going to turn into fused quartz, and that's not something I want. So if I put all of this in at once. Okay, good, good, good. If I put this into furnace mode, it will not. If I had this in alloy mode, it would essentially make fused quartz, and that would be complicated. So this is good. This is actually a really good thing. Okay, so we've got our burn quartz, and we should be able to go ahead and make the QED, I think. Uh, so let's see. First and foremost, we've got our ender infused obsidian already. We'll go ahead and make one of these diamond etched computational matrices, and then we'll make the QED itself, which is great. Now, I forget the name of the little thingies that go along with it. Uh, so let's see, at, uh, at, uh, it's like Ender something. It's from Extra Utilities. I, I can remember what it looks like. It looks basically like a little torch thing. Uh, let's go at extra. Why is that not working? That should not be spitting out all this other stuff. Let's try it up here. At extra. Hmm, that's weird. Let me find the recipe. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I am back. So this is what we need right here. The Ender Flux Crystal. And I think I want four of them. That should be plenty. That makes two, so let's go ahead and make a bit more of this ender-infused obsidian. Ooh, I'm almost out of obsidian. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and we'll make two more ender flux crystals. I'll grab those, and now we have ourselves the QED, which we are going to need to make these ender markers and to ultimately make the ender thermic pump and the ender quarry, which are over here. Here we go. So, the endothermic pump, I think, is probably the first thing we should make. Uh, I don't have any sticks. Let's see. Let's sort this by number of items, actually. And let's just throw some sticks in there. That should be good. So, endothermic pump. I need a iron pick, which I'm just going to throw into... Oh, I, apparently I never made an iron pick in all this time. Uh, and then we have everything else, except we also need an Eye of Ender. And I think I need... I need two of these, actually, so I need to make this recipe twice. So let's throw that in there. And then... One more Iron Pick. And then I'm gonna need a bucket of lava and a bucket of water. So, water... Um, bucket? How am I doing on buckets? I don't have much for buckets, do I? Okay. Um, let's just go ahead and make a couple. Let's make four. One, two, three, four. Four. There we go. And then we'll fill those up with water and lava, respectively. And let's just check at... Extra U? I don't know why that's not working. Hmm... I mean, it works here. I just don't know why it's not working otherwise, but whatever. Okay, so let me get this stuff together for the Ender Quarry, and I'll come back to you in a minute. All right, so we have the Ender Thermic Pump made. Now, we need to make the Ender Quarry. So we're going to need another one of these diamond computational matrices things. Matrix, matrix, however you pronounce it. I'm going to need one diamond pickaxe, and then... Oh! Ender cores. Oh. Oh, I forgot about that. Magical wood. Okay. So, there's a couple ways we can make magical wood. We can use liquid XP, which I actually don't have. We can do enchanted books. That's probably the way to go. Let's see. So, let's make some paper. And we'll just make a few stacks. 
like so. And then we'll go, how many books am I gonna need? I'm pretty sure for magical wood, it's four ender, uh, ender quarry is gonna require eight. So eight times four, 32 books. I don't think I have that much leather. Like I'm, yeah, I do not. Okay. So, I guess I'm off to kill some cows. All right, guys, I am back, and I think we have enough magical wood, finally. That was, that was a bit of a process. There was a lot of books that needed to be obtained, but that's okay. So I think we are now good, finally, to go ahead and make the Ender Quarry, except I forgot to actually make these things, and those need... Those need eyes of ender. One, two. There we go. Now we should be good to go ahead. And I... Really? Really? I'm out of... <sighs> Alright. Not quite enough obsidian. Looks like I'm off to go gather some obsidian, guys. I'll be right back. Alright, guys. For realsies this time. We have everything we need to make the ender quarry. So... There we go, we got ourselves the Ender Quarry. Now, we do need some Ender Markers. Um, there we go. And those are made using Ender Infused Obsidian and Ender Pearls. Now, I, you have to make them in the QED. So, I'm gonna need four of those guys. There we go. And we should have all the things over here. So, if I just put this right there, and we go one, two, three, four. And then go like a so, and like a so. These will all kind of start doing their thing and make us ender markers, which is exactly what we want. That's definitely a good thing. Uh, we've also got our tesseract, which I'm going to need. And we also need to figure out which... Ooh, it's night. When did that happen? Uh, we also need to figure out which direction we're going to send our ender quarry. And I'm pretty sure... I'm going to send it to the south. We'll send it like this way. Uh, the reason being, if we come down to our mines, I've already mined out a pretty good chunk of, well, actually, maybe we should send it north. I haven't really mined anything over here. Yeah, okay, so we'll send it north. That works, awesome. All right, so we've got that all planned out. And let's go... Uh, let's see, we want our ch We want this in a loaded chunk. So right now we've got this chunk here loaded and then one in every direction. So I think I can probably put my ender quarry like right about here. And we can put a Tesseract on it like that. And item mode send. Energy mode receive. There we go. And then this thing will start filling up. But there's no, it doesn't know where to mine just yet. And I believe we're going to have to output it to a chest and then uh, go from there. So let's go item. Oh, that is not how you spell item. Try again. I... Really, keyboard? What? Why? That was weird. Okay. Uh, anyway, so let's grab these, and we want our upgrades as well. And then I want a diamond chest. Just one. And that should be good. And it looks like our markers are all finished as well, so I think we should be good to set this thing up. Let's go ahead and put our QED in there where it belongs. And we'll go up here. And I want to output to this giant, this diamond chest. And then I want this to be insert, this to be extract always. So it's gonna output to this diamond chest and send it into the Tesseract. This is send, this is receive, that's good. We'll put our speed upgrades into here. And I think, I think that should be good. 
so we just need to set up our actual boundaries. So the easiest way that I've found to do that is to stand right here and make a note of the coordinates. So we're at 997. You know what? Let's actually move it to here. And... Um... Here. Just... Well... If I move it a thousand, that makes this really easy to figure out. So I think we're going to make it a thousand right there. And then we'll say a thousand and sixty five. So this will be one of our ender markers just just to make it a little bit easier to kind of remember where everything is. And then let's go ahead and set this stuff back up. You go there, like so, extract always, and that should be good. So one really important thing to note is the Y coordinate, because if you're at the wrong elevation, these aren't going to link up properly. So let me go ahead and get these linked. We're basically just going to make a, like a 100 by 100 area. That should be plenty big for the time being. So I'm going to have to go to 65 and 63, which would be right about up here. Let's see. I went too far. Of course, it's going to be like right in the middle of a spruce forest. 65 and... This would be 63 right there, so if we put this, you'll see the little link to let it know, to let you know that it's actually linked properly, which is good. And now I need to go to 900, or actually 1,100. Do, 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 fly off in this direction, 1,100, right about here. And this needs to be 65, so it needs to go right there. And then finally, we go this way. Back to 165. And then this will start mining out a 100 by 100 area. Which is going to be a lot of resources. That, that, like that, that's going to take a really long time to finish, which is good. That's what we want. We want something that will last a while. We don't have to. Uh, we don't want to have to set this thing back up every couple of minutes. But you can see those are all linked now. Let's turn off our chunk boundaries and our debug screen. And then finally, we should just be able to right click on the Ender Quarry. And it should start mining. We'll see stuff start appearing in here. Uh, there we go. And it is it is mining. Um, I'm thinking it might actually be outputting. Is it outputting directly to the Tesseract? Can it do that? I didn't think it could. There's a real easy way to find out. Yeah, it's outputting directly to the Tesseract. Oh, awesome. I didn't think it could do that. I thought it had to output to a chest and then you had to import it. This is even better. That means that this thing is getting all the power it needs. And on top of that, it's outputting, saving us a lot of space and all is well. So we've got our ender quarry set up. That's going to mine us a ton of resources, which is great. All in all, I think we've made a lot of progress this episode, guys. This room definitely needs a little bit of love, but uh, that's okay. We can, we can deal with that. Maybe in the next episode. Either way, we are in very good shape right now. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I do appreciate it, and it really helps out my channel. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. There are links in the video description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll definitely see you next time.